name of our Lord Jesus, oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we give you praise, we give you praise. Have your way on me, Spirit of God. Have your way on me this afternoon, Spirit of God. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Oh Father, we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. Oh, thank you, my father. In the name of our Lord Jesus, you say in your word, if we lift you up, my Father, then you shall also lift us up, O God. We exalt you in this place, O Father. Our Father, we lift up our eyes unto you, O God. You that has told us in your word, O oh Father, now that we are born again, uh, now that we are risen with Christ, we ought to set our eyes uh, on oh, these that are, are above, O oh God. Uh, we, O oh Father, lift up our eyes to you, O oh God. Uh, Oh Father, we come out of every distraction, O God. We come out of everything that set us off, God, my Father. We lift up our eyes to you, O God. That the expectations of the righteous of God shall not be cut over. I thank you, my Father. In the name of Jesus, O God. In the name of Jesus, O Father. Yet take a baba bosaya. Rabba baba bade bosika talaba. Yet take a baba bokoya. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. A miracle can happen. Thank you, my Father. Oh, shara baba baba bade bosika talaba. Yet take a baba bokoya. Man take a baba bosaya. Seish katala bande. Thank you, my Father. In the name of Jesus, O God, in the name of Jesus, O oh, Father, we exalt you. We exalt you, our Father. We exalt you. Come on, don't get tired. Take time and fellowship with God. Take time and fellowship with God. Bible says all men must come to him because he's the God that heareth our prayers. Man, they will seek at Alabama, get take Alabama, Bokoyo, Shanda, Alabama, Bosaya. I thank you, my Father. I thank you, my Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus, O oh God, let nobody come into this session, my Father, and ever be the same again, my Father. Oh, seasons are shifting, my Father. I thank you. In the name of Lord Jesus, oh God, you say in your word, my Father, him that has no money, let him come and buy. If that is thirsty, let him come and drink. I thank you, my father, for seasons of refreshing my father. Thank you for seasons of refreshing. Thank you for seasons of refreshing, my Father. Let somebody leave you with new strength today, my Father. Let somebody contact a freshness of their lives, O God. Let somebody leave you with a fresh dream, my Father. Let somebody leave you with a fresh zeal, O God. 
In the name of Jesus, Manteca Rababoko, you say, Catala Mande, let somebody leave you with a fresh anointing, let somebody leave you with a fresh fire for God. In the name of Jesus, my Father, Rababa de Bosi Catala Baken, Teca Rababoko, you say, Catala Mande, oh Father, I thank you for restoration, my Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, so God, in the name of our Lord Jesus, oh Father, Mande Bosi Catala Baken, Teca Rababoko. Babokoyo, Rabba Baba Bade Bosika Talaba Kente Karaba Babokoyo, Esata Kala de Lebosa Shanga Rabba Babokoyo, Mante Karaba Babosaya. In the name of our Lord Jesus, oh God, let somebody leave you with a fresh word. In the name of our Lord Jesus, my Father, something fresh, oh God, something new in the lives of my Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus, oh God, we saturate this atmosphere, my Father. We saturate this atmosphere, oh God. Let miracles, signs, and wonders, my Father, take place in this place, oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus, oh Father. Oh, Mande Oh, fresh strength, my father. Come on, somebody. Declare something fresh in your life this afternoon. In the name of Jesus. You said your word that one or two are gathered in your name. Oh, Father, you are there in the midst of God. We thank you for your presence in this place, oh Father. Oh, thank you, my Father. Bible says, oh God, that have the apostles gathered and prayed, my Father. One prayer that they made is that you may stretch forth your hand, that miracles, signs, and wonders may be done through the name of the Holy Child. Father, we thank you for signs and wonders, oh God. Healing can take place in this place, my Father. Sala baba baba de bosi katala ba kente kara baba bokoyo, shanda na baba bosa ya mante kara baba bokoyo, ra baba baba de bosi katala ba kente kara baba bosa ya mante kara baba bokoyo seish katala mande. As your word comes forth, my Father, let it impact the lives of your people, O God. As your word comes forth, my Father, let it transform our lives, my Father. Oh, we shall never be the same again. We thank you for this experience right here, O Father. Shanda Baba Bokoyo, Mante Kara Baba Bosaya, Sage Katala Mande. Glory to your name, glory to your name, Shanda Baba Bokoyo. Mande Bosi Katala Bai Kente Kara Baba Bosaya. Mande Bosi Katala Bai Kente Kara Baba Bokoyo. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Asante Baba, to the Semani Asante, glory to your name, Shanda Baba Bokoya, Rapa Baba Bago Sika Talabai Kente Karababa Bosaya, Mante Karababa Bokoyo, Sage Katala Mande. Glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name. Thank you, my Father. Mande Bosi Katalabai Kente Karababa Bokoya. Shanda Baba Bosaya, Mande Bosi Katalabai Kente Karababa Bokoya. In the name of our Lord Jesus, O God. You, my Father, know the hearts of your people. I thank you that you're ministering to everyone, O God, according to their need this afternoon, my Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus, O God. Bible says that they minister to you, my Father. O God, you're ministering angels, minister to them, O Father. In the name of Jesus, O God. Yete karababa bosaya, shanda rababa boko yo mante karababa bosaya. I thank you, my Father. Thank you, Spirit of God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Just give Him a wave offering. Just give Him a wave offering. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Father, we thank you. We thank you this afternoon. We thank you, Father. Mande bosi katala ba yente karababa boko yo. Rababa ba ba mande bosi katala ba yente karababa bosaya. Thank you.
In the name of our Lord Jesus, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Rabba Baba Bade Bosi Katana Bai Kente Karaba Babo Saya. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Mante Karaba Babo Ko, you say, Katana Mande. In the name of our Lord Jesus, O God. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, O God. Ye te kana baba bosaya, mande bosi kata la ba ye te kana baba bokoya, raba baba mande bosi kata la ba ye te kana baba bosaya, mande kana baba bokoya, seish kata la mande. Even as they invite the praise and worship, and just keep on fellowshiping with Him. In the name of Jesus, glory to Your name, glory to Your name, glory to Your name. Ye te kana baba bosaya. Glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name, oh Father, thank you. I thank you, my Father. Glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name, in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, the Lord is here for us. Amen. He is present, I'm telling you. So receive your destiny. Be restored in your destiny. The stars, they are shining. They have been taken back to where they belong. Your destiny has been restored. Whoever you are, those who are watching online, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Saturday service. Yeah. Mulize uh, Kamako already for God's impartation. It, that touching hand of God Kamako ready to receive it. Hallelujah. Even at home, you can just, you know, ask your child, <laughs> ask your wife, ask your husband if uh, they are ready to receive of what God has in store for us this day. Hallelujah. We want to praise him. We want to adore his name for his worthy of our praise, worthy of our honor and adoration. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you give him a shout of victory in this place for his worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let me see you put your hands together. Oh, 
just to declare that they're coming into a new season in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus shandala bazakata repala bazaka yate zantala bakata lama pala bakata na mashandala bakia bakata na mazakata reda baba baba bazaka 
Rita la bakata na mashanda la bakata na Reta la bakaya kata na mazanta Lipa la bakata na mashekete Eta la bakata na mazakata na mashanda In the name of Jesus 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 Why don't we give the Lord a mighty hand cup of praise It is out it I have a feeling we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you so much, praise and worship team. We really appreciate uh, your commitment in Jesus' name. Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of God is here. Praise the Lord. And uh, I was just flowing in the worship and enjoying myself. And uh, God has really remembered us from those who are with us from the start until now, and uh, we have been moving from one glory to another in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. High five your neighbor, then kindly take your seat in the name of Jesus. Amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Hallelujah. So we bless the Lord. We bless the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, yesterday, uh, our pastor ministered about entrance into a new season. He explained what seasons are, and uh, we were extremely blessed. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Ah, somebody shout a better amen. 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 So I'm helping you to do some warm-up before he comes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give Jesus a praise that he deserves in Jesus' name? Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. It has been a wonderful time, and uh, we thank God for everything. So without taking much time, I would uh, want to again invite our beloved pastor, Pastor Pancras Ngirao Gomo, to just come and minister to us. Praise the Lord. Open up yourself for a time of divine impartation. Open up yourself to receive from heaven, and I know God will bless you tremendously. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. With the joy of the Lord, why don't we rise up on our feet as we invite Pastor Pancras Ngira in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Amen. Praise God. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. That sound is nice. Oh, my God. If it was here yesterday, fire more fire. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? Kind request. When you guys sit very far, you become suspects. When you come closer, I'll be happier. So, uh, Mr. and uh, Mrs. K. Yes, I'm sorry. I got to up on a joke. You can't see my post. So, I can't see. Where is tough stuff? Tough to pilot. I'm sorry. You might watch. I was there. I can't bear. I'm going to say, if you was there, I can't bear. What to a praise. Song in it. Song in it. There is no chair here. So, we could find a way fix. Move yours in front. Move yours in front. And then the other ones can keep on pushing like that. We have a bit of order. I think that would be okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. Is the sun? I hope the sun is not working again. Is it okay? Beautiful. Are you guys blessed? All right. So we thank God for this opportunity. And once again, I want to really appreciate the Lord for Pastor Osalo together with his wife and also the entire pastorate team and leadership for the excellent work uh, that is taking course in this particular ministry. Um, I know that from, I think, 2020, there's been a lot of transitions that we have been taking as a ministry. So several things automatically may not be the same, but we thank God for growth. Somebody give me an amen. amen. We thank God for growth. Growth is assessed in different ways. Uh, if you make an assessment of growth in only one area, then you limit uh, the opportunity to actually get to see it taking course. Uh, you know, somebody once said that anytime you want to see uh, a church is moving to the next level, you can look at it in three ways. One is a spiritual intensity and the atmosphere that is set in that particular meeting. Just like any other preacher, if a preacher goes to preach anywhere, uh, you can tell uh, your preaching by first looking at the atmosphere and then you also consider the impact of the word. Uh, but secondly, whenever you're also looking at the growth of the church, you can also be able to assess it by consistency. You look at the consistency of the people, uh, not necessarily to look at the ones that are newly joined, but the ones that have been there with you from the beginning. Are you understanding me? Uh, that basically shows that John 17 is being fulfilled, Pastor Salo, in your life, that those that you have given me, I have held, and none has been taken away from my hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's a very powerful thing. 
because uh, human beings move naturally. So you cannot control their movement. But if they will to be with you, it actually shows that they believe in you. And that's a powerful sign. Do you believe that? Praise God. And then number three, we are now talking of numerical growth, which I do believe, I know during the week, there's a lot of changes that has taken place in Word of Light here, but we are still moving forward and God is going to be able to help us. I'm proud of the fact that God has helped uh, Nairobi to be able to purchase the property and that's something worth something. I think we could give the Lord a clap offering for that. It's something that we need to celebrate. Um, it's also good as the Lord will help us. There's a place I think we are reaching where we need complete settlement as a ministry. I can give you my own experience. We were forced to move out of town uh, last year. We are now exactly one year. Uh, by April last uh, April this year and uh, entering May, Pastor Salo has been there. Pastor Dan has been there. Um, I don't know whether... Have you been there, Brian? Uh, who else? There's one else. Uh, Brandwell has also been there. Uh, so we were actually forced to shift. It was a good force. That time I was actually thinking of us either looking for some hotel room, trying to adjust one or two things. Uh, but I called the pastors and I asked them that we pray and then we began to discuss. And then that, that's when we decided that the land that we've had all along, why don't we all of a sudden just go there? It's like a 15 minute drive from town. Um, you drive slightly inside. Uh, besides that, uh, if you're used to town ministry, when you go to estate ministry, the dynamics completely change, completely. Uh, so we are literally experiencing a, a very major change. For like about a month, for example, this month, I've not been in church. And I know my people are watching me. Hello, are you there? <laughs> so uh, the change has been major, Pastor Brian, very major. Uh, but one thing why I'm giving this, uh, this particular story is because there are few things I've been able to learn out of experience and not necessarily because of decisions that have been made. I made a statement yesterday. I said that seasons are God-ordained. You cannot control them. Uh, sometimes God can ordain certain things to happen to you that you just have to always make the decision to flow with them. It's like Joseph when there was a wind that blew him to Egypt. And the best that he did was to align and also maximize it and he emerged to be the best. Otherwise, all along, you would have completely been negative and bitter and lament before God that, God, I thought you gave me a prophecy, my brothers would bow, and yet you have taken me away from them. But he trusted God, and God answered prayer. Amen. So I see us generally as a ministry also moving in the same uh, wind of direction. So you guys will constantly experience a bit of changes, but I can assure you as the Lord helps the leadership in this ministry and as everything is gearing forward, there's settlement coming ahead of us. Amen. Your amen needs to be loud. I say there's settlement coming ahead of us. Uh, this is a prayer that I want you people to also pray for. Just imagine if we are in our own land. Being where we are is very good. It's still challenging. We are not yet done. <laughs> we started building, uh, I don't want to say by faith, by force. Amen. You know, <laughs> by force, not by faith. When we arrived there, we used to have to hire tents. We would set them up, 100 seater, and another one for the kids on the other side. That means you pay close to every Sunday. Uh, we had to uh, coordinate for transport. I have this small truck, so we were using the small truck, but I had to give the small truck, I released it uh, for some contract I'd sent it for. So again, we have to hire a truck, constantly bring in all the sound. We had to get a place where we put the sound. Very many things automatically change. What I'm trying to bring about is it has been difficult, but it is worth it. Are you understanding me? We were even hoping that I'd convince, I tried to convince Apostle for us having the conference uh, back in Eldoret so that it acts as a point of encouragement for each one of us. But dynamics still affected us because we're still a long way. We haven't yet set the windows. We had actually started with a tent. Uh, initially, we contracted somebody, paid him about 425, uh, uh, even more than that, 25,000 uh, towards constructing the tent. Uh, the fellow only came, set up the beam, got a person for, uh, to set up the, to try and landscape the place a little bit, and then he disappeared. When he disappeared, we had to look for him, took him to jail, and uh, after that, that's when he came back, did the roof alone and the front again, he disappeared. Uh, one year now, he has never cleared that tent. One year, but God will help us, it has to be finished. 
So in the process, while we were thinking is about to finish the 10 pastor salary, we made a decision to put some courses. You know, in tents, you at least put a bit of courses, like about three courses going up into this idea, your tent. So while we were doing that, the fellow that came in to do that work is a fool. He told us, why don't you guys level this place? We even regretted. So we've learned also through a bit of mistakes. And that's how we started building without, uh, I know this one is going live, but without even consent, legal consent, uh, this thing they call what? There's a document that you actually get. We, we just started by faith. And we thank God that those people never walked around that area to carry our people away. <laughs> Until the place where we reached, we were able to do it by God's grace, God protect us. And you know you have to have a document, eh? legally that permits you to do all that god himself just helped us to reach where we have been able to reach we are believing god that we shall be able to make a completion of the entire thing because we needed to finish it finish the children's uh, church finish the toilets and then purchase uh, more property again i am repeating all this because the truth is entirely in the ministry there is a major change that god is bringing to us being here is good, but it's not exactly where God is summoning us to. So when you will feel the discomfort, I want you to make it positive, uh, like what Second Kings chapter 6 says. It says, the sons of the prophet turned to Elisha, and they said to him, it was not Elisha that came up with the idea. I want each one of you people to begin to come up, and you sit down with your pastor, and tell your pastor, we feel a move, and we need to push towards this next level. Otherwise, if you allow the discomfort to stay for too long, it may end up working against us. I need an amen. And the ministry has to move to another dimension. We are going to talk more tomorrow, and God is going to help us and even pray about it. Job chapter number 14, Job 14, we will read verse number 14, and then we are going to cover some small uh, teaching and do prayers, uh, and then we will build up tomorrow. Since many of the people are not here, we will also trust God as we celebrate the anniversary. Uh, we will also combine it. When did this ministry start? 2003, yeah? Yeah, 2003. And I remember it is when I came and I did a women's conference. This church started with a women's conference, Alice. Powerful women's conference. Eh? God has helped us. Amen. Job 14, 14. It says, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Now, Amplified Bible speaks about all the days of my service and warfare and then he says shall i wait until my change and release comes i want to repeat what i said again and i want you to take note of the words i'm using amplified bible says all the days of my service and warfare shall i wait until my change and release comes there are four words there the first one is the word service the second one is the word warfare then on the other part there are two other words that we also see there the word that we actually see there uh, is the word change and then the word release each one of them is connected in one way or the other i want to speak about seasons uh the purpose of change of seasons the purpose of change of seasons somebody say the purpose of change of seasons now, change is inevitable. Whether you want change or you do not want it, it's something that has to happen in life because that is part of what God has ordained to take course in our lives to initiate uh, either an upgrade, a development, or to even position or reposition something in somebody's life. Uh, and so with that in mind, then it teaches you that one of the things that happens whenever change is taking course is to simply find a way to align yourself. In Job 14, when Job was actually speaking, he was making a lamentation because of the things that he had gone through. His complaint was that he wished he wasn't born because the warfare he was facing was a bit too much. But in his utterance in Amplified Bible, he also speaks in a way to secure himself. He says, all the days of my service, talking of investment, and my warfare, talking of everything possible to try to break through, he says, I will wait until two things have to happen. That God will bring change in my life, and not only change, because change has to come with release. Release simply means that you are permitted to move to the next level you are mandated uh, or you are given the right to proceed to the next level you know it's like pulling a catapult the moment you pull it even as you pull it 
much more, it keeps on straining, but that strain is worth the pull. Because the moment there will be a release, the impact will be far much more bigger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So service is never wasted. Neither is warfare wasted. Everything about your life is always uh, uh, what we call an investment that climaxes towards a day that change will take course and also release will take course. Now that again should also teach you that therefore you must know how never to relent in your service. No matter whether the changes should be there. Never relent in your service. Be consistent. Be committed. Even if you may not understand what is taking place. You know, there are people who are seasonal by nature. What I mean is they do things because they feel like doing it. But Paul makes a statement. He says, preach in and out of season. He's simply trying to tell you, be consistent in life. I happen to go to uh, um, uh, this dam, Masinga Dam. Years ago in 20, 2002, we were doing a mission there. And so we, after the mission, we were taken for a tour around the Masinga Dam. And so we were taken into where the machines are. And we were told what this is for, what this is for, what this one is for. And then the guy said, I spared this one for last for a purpose. And we looked at him, waiting for him to explain. And that is when he went ahead and he told us that this specific machine does not work unless all the rest are working. So we looked at him, we wondered, what are you trying to say? He said, this one works by a principle called the principle of excitement. In other words, when the rest are working, it becomes excited, then it works. They are Christians like that. They only commit themselves because others are committed. They are only given because others are given. They are passionate because others are passionate. If others are not there, then they die automatically. Now please understand me. If you are constantly epileptic in your service, you will never really enjoy your full results. There's a scripture in the book of 3 John. Go with me there, then we come back here. There's a scripture in the book of 3 John that should provoke you to think, and it's something uh, that personally, on a personal level, I have actually worked to ask God uh, to really help me. Uh, sorry, uh, 2 John. 2 John. I'm very sorry. 2 John, I hope. I'm correct. It talks about verse number 8, 2 John, verses number 8. It has one chapter. I know we all know that. Look at what he says here. Are you there? Yes. If you're there, you can say, come to you, there will be fool. Somebody say fool. Say it with some authority. Say again, fool. So that's what this man is simply trying to say. So that's why I'm encouraging you that every action you actually undertake is an investment. So he says, all the days of my service. So he's committed to the act of serving. And let me encourage somebody who has been serving here. May God keep you fresh in service. Don't grow weary. No matter what you keep on seeing, remember God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. God rewards your service. He takes note of your service. Even if you will tell me, maybe if I had a bigger platform, I would do better. One thing I will always tell you, God is the one that picked up David from the backside and he brought him to visibility. Everyone has a season of emergence. Today we are celebrating people like Joshua Selman who recently did one major meeting back in the UK. But many of you do not know, in the year 2020, uh, 2019 uh, and 2020 particularly is when there was an emergence of some of these major known apostles today. The time when COVID is closing churches is the time many people are now beginning to explode. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Apostle Arome, Apostle uh, Oropo, uh, and whether you talk of Joshua Selman, majorly arose at those, at those particular times. So no matter what seasons are, be consistent. Because your consistency in service, are you hearing me? And number two, in warfare, somebody say service. service. Please say it, with, say it like you came to church. Say again, service, service and warfare. So your consistency both in service and in warfare will always advance you to your change and to your release. So what I want to say here is that I, let me again repeat this. I want to encourage somebody, do not relent in your service. Amen. And don't become like that machine that is dependent on excitement to serve. Be given. You don't pray because you feel like it's your lifeline. It's your lifeline. You don't serve because you feel like if everyone would preach because they feel like, I can assure you if we depended on feelings, you know, I told my people one day, I told them the same way. Some of you don't feel like coming to church. Don't be deceived. Even we, we don't feel like wanting to see your faces. We also have Sundays we want to sleep and revenge. We are humans like you are. Oh, I thought I had an amen. So we keep consistent by choice. Not even with the mind of a reward, but the calling, we have a covenant with God. But also we are aware, we want rewards. So that when it comes, we encourage others. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now there are three aspects of change. One, it is natural. Change is natural. So you cannot be able to fully control it. The best you do is to respond to it. 
Change is natural. Two, change is intentional. So whenever it keeps on coming to you, then you have to also know that besides, you know, there are things which don't naturally change. You intentionally change them. In Genesis chapter 26, God told Isaac, you will abide in the land I will show you. In verse number 12, Isaac sowed seed in the land. And the Bible says he reaped a hundredfold. God did not lead him to sow seed. He did it himself. And when he did it, by obedience to God, he had a result that was actually record breaking. So change is intentional. But thirdly, change is seasonal. Okay? So you have to discern it like yesterday as we were able to learn. So let me repeat it again. Can I repeat it? One, change is natural. Secondly, change is intentional. And number three, change is seasonal. Now, I want to advance because of my time and I want to pray together with you people, together with your pastor. I want to now move into the aspect of why seasons have to change and why it is very essential to walk through the changes of seasons. Number one, first key reason is because when there's a change of season, it is designed to bring renewal of hope and fresh expectation. Every change of season is designed to bring a renewal of hope and also a fresh expectation. Naturally, speaking, whenever we keep on retaining in one season for too long, there's a sense of weariness. So one of the key reasons why seasons have to change is because it releases freshness of hope. It causes somebody to have new hope and it causes somebody to also have new expectation. That's why we have seconds. That's why we have days. That's why we have hours. You know, the Bible would speak in Psalms chapter 30. He says that though morning, I mean, though sorrow may last for a night, talking of one season, joy cometh in the morning. So there's that expectation that even if you will sleep with pain at least sleep then wake up knowing that God has given you a new day which has new hope and new expectations so we have new weeks we have what we consider as new years even as a ministry tomorrow will be a new year for this ministry I know very clearly we do AGMs at the end of an year and then we say by 2022 we are an AGM release our calendar for 2023 as a ministry but let me say this officially this ministry begins when there's an anniversary in Exodus chapter number 12, the moment the children of Israel were going to encounter their deliverance, God told them in verse number 2 that today will be the beginning of your year. So the beginning of the year of word of light, Nairobi begins tomorrow, officially. The amen only comes from pastor. The rest of you are still stuck in January 2023. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, there are things that will start from tomorrow you have never seen. That neighbor is not convincing. Turn to the other one that looks a bit more convincing. Amen. And tell your neighbor, neighbor, <laughs> be convincing to them. Tell them again, neighbor, they are breakthroughs that you're about to encounter that you have never been able to encounter because a new year starts tomorrow. If you believe that, shout a good amen. amen. So every time a season changes, it creates new hope. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 12. Proverbs 13 and verse number 12. The Bible says, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. Hope deferred, hope delayed, hope prolonged, make it the heart sick. But it says, when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Desire is when a new season opens up, it becomes a tree of life to an individual. Now, if you look at it in the message Bible, it says, unrelenting disappointment makes the heart sick. Unrelenting disappointment makes the heart sick. But a sudden good break, are you hearing what I'm trying to say? A sudden good break brings a release. So sometimes in life, you can go through oscillations for a long period of time, and sometimes it can end up breaking you. Look at Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 7. Go there very quickly. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 7. Do you know what it says? It says, oppression makes a wise man mad. Oppression makes a wise man mad. That scripture, Brian, brings a suggestion that if somebody stays under affliction for a long period of time, they end up losing their mind. Let me show you madness. Madness is when a lady has been waiting on God and keeping herself pure and no brother has been able to at least show up in any way. So the lady makes up her mind that these Christian brothers don't care. They don't even greet me. Neither is any one of them willing to marry me. And yet there are very many unbelievers that are committed to marry me. So the person makes a decision and makes a mad decision and decides <laughs> to get married to an unbeliever. That's what madness is. Because a person has long waited. They decide. Me and father, you're an unbeliever. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? 
Then you find madness in church. A person has been doing business, applying for tenders. None of it is working. Because of the Christian values they have stood with, they have decided they will neither pay a bribe, neither will they lie or do anything stupid. But nothing is working. Even with the giving, the sacrifice as a prayer, it seems like nothing is working. So because of the warfare the individual goes through, one time they break and they make the decision in a mad one for that matter, that I would rather than pay a bribe and get a breakthrough. God will forgive me after. <laughs> One pastor who was in a church that is known in this town that I will not mention, a very renowned church, and those were the days that that church was actually exploding, messed up only once, and he was a married pastor. That one mess up, one, costed his life. Because that one mess up made him contract HIV, and from that time, those were the years when HIV was a major thing, the guy died. A very known pastor as per that time. So people were asking the question, what exactly happened? And that's when it was given that he was actually finding a major challenge in his marriage. And every time because a wife would accuse him, this guy is unfaithful. And he had never been unfaithful. So he decided for once, let me fulfill the prophecy of my wife. <laughs> and decided to go and sleep. But the devil is a bad devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. He decided to also answer his prayer by a little bit more by adding in HIV. May you not make mad decisions. Mm, at least I have some few amens and one hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, may you never make any mad decision. <laughs> so why does God change seasons? He does it to give you a sense of hope, a new one. He does it in order to at least open up fresh expectation. Oh, please give me an amen. God knows you can break down if every day remain the same way. So God has to constantly allow you to have changes of seasons so that there is renewed hope in all throughout your life. If changes of seasons will come your way, and that's why tomorrow is a very significant day for Word of Light. We should come tomorrow with excitement because it's a prophetic day for this assignment. So the same way we'll be celebrating Word of Light, we are also going to be celebrating people's miracles right here. The same way we are going to be announcing that a new year are we entering as Word of Light now. Nairobi is the same way that we are going to be announcing somebody is entering a new season in their life. Please, I need a better amen right here. Seasons come to give you new hope. Seasons come so that they can build fresh expectation on you. Without hope, without expectation, there is no progress. Even in the dimensions of faith, one of the dimensions of faith that is necessary for living is called hope. I mean, it's called uh, uh, what we call uh, the measure of faith. Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 3. The measure of faith. The Bible says, and God has given to every man a measure or the measure of faith. That is to say that every human being lives because they have faith. When you sleep, you sleep in faith, you will wake up. That is faith. When you board a vehicle, you are not so sure with the driver, but you have faith, you will arrive somewhere. So without that, you cannot really be able to move. So we need new hope. And I pray for somebody, may you receive it today. May you receive new hope today. May anything that has been very difficult for you and caused you pain, may it fall away from you. May anything that has actually worked against you and caused you to feel like you're about to make deci mad decisions, may God deliver you from it today. I heard of a pastor, Pastor Salo, very known pastor, I will not make mention of him. He has one of the mega churches in this nation, had been a, a major tele-evangelist tele from since those years up until today. He's still an authority in this land. But his son was a drunkard, a known one. Now, uh, the son, even on Sundays, while they were going to church, they would find the son on the trenches, the firstborn, completely drunk. Okay, let me just mention it. This is Pastor Wilfred Lai. His son, firstborn, was completely drunk. And because of that, she, he never committed himself to his marriage. Therefore, the wife was suffering of a delay to get children. And that was affecting in several ways. Added weight. The guy was always on trenches and you're a known pastor. Uh, the mother was the one always picking him from the bar, picking him from trenches. And yet you are known and you're preaching very hard. But every time Pastor Lai would say, I have faith, my son will one day preach the gospel. The wife of uh, Lai Jr. was so desperate that she made a mad decision. And one day, according to the story, she decided to even go to a witch doctor. <laughs> Pressure is bad. Imagine you're under such a great anointing, but pressure can move you to such an extent. I know there are some of you even right now, there are things that have always made you make mad decisions. Sita omba, ikai. Akini nimekujapa kurudisha maumbi. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Some of you automatically, you've just decided to make mad decisions. Some things you've just decided you will drop them. I'm here to help you to pick them back up again. 
Listen, the fact that somebody hurt you doesn't mean that they are bad people. There are times God allows people to train your heart. So that you too will develop to an extent that you will become more merciful and more gracious to other people. Everyone goes through different trainings. And by the way, if you ever thought church people can't hurt you, they can do it very well. Anyone can hurt you. Satan was even in God's presence when the sons of God appeared. Satan was part of the bandwagon. So even in God's presence, Satan can still be here. The glory of God is here. Even Satan is dying. Let me tell you, he appeared in God's presence. <laughs> so he can appear anywhere. But God allows all things because he's building something. So if you look at it in a negative way, you miss the lesson. But if you open yourself to the reality of God's wisdom, then automatically you move to the next level. The amen is disappeared. Oh, I carried my own. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. God therefore gives us seasons to tell us, I have allowed you to have breath because there's still hope. I said there's still hope. The Bible says in the same Job chapter number 14 that there is a hope for a tree. As long as it has a scent of water, it can still rise up again. And to every one of you, no matter how things have been, your dream doesn't die. Men do, but dreams do not die. So seasons are given to remind you that your dreams are still there. And the reason you're alive is because there's a dream on the inside of you. In Acts chapter number 27, when Paul was about to be shipped together with the other prisoners and they were going to Rome, the Bible says that Paul perceived that the voyage would be a danger. What did Paul do, Pastor Salo? He actually gave a word to the centurion and he gave a word to the captain that I perceive, brethren, that there will be great danger, including danger of our lives. Let us not undertake it. But the Bible says the centurion decided to obey the captain who prevailed over him. But when they began the journey, the battle was so bad. Have you ever read that scripture? Acts chapter 27, that the entire ship was completely wrecked. But Paul rises. Oh my God, I like that scripture. And Paul says, ladies, I wish you had me from the beginning so that we would suffer no loss. Go read that scripture. He said, but yet again, the angel of the Lord appeared unto me and told me I must stand before Caesar. Therefore, he has given me all of your lives. None of you will die. In other words, it's the word God put in him that he could stand boldly to tell them no one of you will die because I carry something. So the word or the vision God has given you sustains you even in pain. But now you must remember the seasons are to remind you that that vision is still keeping you for a purpose. And you are progressing towards a destination. Please give your neighbor a high five and tell your neighbor, neighbor, receive new hope, receive fresh expectation. So seasons change because God is giving you hope. Again, I pray for somebody. Any spirit of discouragement may be broken. Even if you stayed jobless, it doesn't mean that God is done with you. You are alive for a purpose. You will sing a new song not long from today. I pray for you every spell of depression, every spell of despair. May it fail today. I pray for somebody here. I know your neighbor may not know, but quietly you may be weeping and wondering when will change ever appear. I ask the Lord, who is the holder of all seasons, to begin to hold you also. And I pray that he will be able to heal your heart and cause your spirit to receive fresh hope. Please, if you receive it, lift your hands and shout aloud, hallelujah, right here. Yeah. Number two, why do seasons change? They change to reset a person, to bring a reset to a person. I don't know why, but I just need a bit of power. So I you Pastor Pancras, I'm not going to power. In fact, to have power. Kalaba Sandala Karia. Tell your neighbor power, 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 power. I told you, tell your neighbor, don't look at me. Tell your neighbor power. That one doesn't like it. Look at the other one, tell them until you feel like Pastor Pancras. Power, power. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So number three, it comes to bring a reset. It comes to bring a reset. Every change of season is for reset. In other words, it comes to give you a new beginning. A new beginning. A new beginning. There is always a platform that God organizes to bring a reset to every individual. What it means, it doesn't exactly mean the former years are forgotten, but there are times God has to intentionally bring you into a place where it looks like every other year. You can just balance it a little. I notice it's out of order. Every other year seems like it is wiped away. 
Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. The Bible says, I will restore unto you the ears. You remember that scripture? That the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust had actually eaten. But in the study of that scripture and a close look at that scripture, you will see the earlier verses. It should be verse 23. It says, earlier on, I answered you moderately. But now will I give you both the former rain and the latter rain in one month. God is simply trying to tell them that the breakthrough I will give you will wipe away any type of tears you had ever known. There's a way that God can visit a ministry or an individual and give them an answer that literally looks like they had never been in trouble. Clear picture of it in the Bible is when we get to observe three Hebrew boys thrown in the fiery furnace. What I like about that scripture is when they came out, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Bible says they did not smell smoke and that will be your story. God will give you a reset. You will never be known to smell like the past years. You will look like you are built for palace. You will look like you are built for that company. You will look like you are built for that dimension of life. No one will ever believe you by the time they will look at you. It's because God will give you a reset. I said God will give you a reset. I repeat it again. God will give you a reset. If anyone was to ask you, have you ever been discouraged? They are asking you because you do not look like you have ever been discouraged. Yet they are unaware. There were days you had decisions of walking away. But God changes seasons to give you a reset. May somebody here receive a reset. A new beginning. Isaiah chapter number 48 and verses number 30, verse number 17. All of you are acquainted with that scripture. Is it 48 or 43? Let me clarify that. Uh, and then we are going to build up. Could I pray for somebody again receive a new beginning in Jesus' name? 43 and verses number 18. 43 and verse number 17. Isaiah 43 and verse 17. Verse number 18. He says, remember yet not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse number 19 says, behold, I will do a new thing. Word of light, I announce that a new thing is coming here. Now it shall spring forth, yet shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God can change your seasons in one move and it can wipe away years of total shame in your life. God can bring a miracle that can literally wipe away every tear you ever knew and cause you never to remember the seasons of pain you ever had in your life. God can bring a season that will literally establish you on a pedestal of progress and an uncommon victory on every side of your life. It's called a reset. It's called a new beginning. It's called a fresh start. It's called God walking into the scene and helping you advance in your destiny without any sweat anymore. And God is going to do that for somebody right here. He will give you a job that will pay you for the previous years. You never had a job. We had a pastor called Pastor Washira who is now in Nairobi. Washira came from South Africa. He used to work with the United Nations. But before he worked with the United Nations, when he left to go to South Africa, uh, he landed there, spent about one year before his wife left the job she was doing uh, in Nairobi Hospital and then decided to join him back in South Africa. As she landed in South Africa, she went there together with the first son. Uh, the first thing that actually happened to them is at, by the time they landed, that company that he was working for had not been paying him. They gave him money enough to give him fuel to help him sustain himself, but not give him the payment which was required. Remember, he was in a foreign nation. That time, Pastor Washida had to survive. I remember when I landed there, there was a vehicle he used to use that was extremely old and raggedy. He had struggled. For over two years, that company had not paid him. But one day, Pastor Washida was given a story uh, there were organizations that were meeting uh, and he was to stand up and give a presentation for his own organization he stood up and he's very committed in his work and made a major presentation after the presentation Pastor Washira said uh, that somebody called him aside and began to tell him that I heard your presentation and I liked it and I was really moved and I felt we have been looking for such a person like you and we feel we need you in our company then he was waiting that's when the fellow said uh, I come from United Nations and I just felt we want you. Pastor Washira was welcome to the United Nations. So while he actually wanted to tell the fellow, please, I may need to talk to my boss because I also have a contact with them. They told him we are willing to buy you from that company. The money that they paid to buy him from the other company was a combination of the two years he was not paid. That was money to just 
welcome him. Are you understanding me? Washira went ahead and paid the landlady money that he had owed that landlady for some, for some few months, over six months. By the time he paid the landlady, the landlady asked him, where did you get all this money from? <laughs> did not just give the landlady the payment, also did shopping. And the woman thought that this guy went to a witch doctor, Asangoma. Listen, they are miracles that God can do that will mesmerize people around you. May God do something for you that will make you brand new. Good looking. You will emerge until everyone will wonder, wonder where have you been? Kwani umetokea kutoka hapi? Wewe ndio utaanza kuinuka. Ayo emeni yenu haiko hapo. Jax was a pastor of 20 people and he did this pastoring for 20 people for over 10 years. Struggled with them in West Virginia. The story goes over how God began to open doors for him and he would be preaching in places. But how he came into TBN, most of you may have heard the story, is how he was hosted by a particular man of God who was doing a major conference in, uh, uh, he used to do the conference in Oral Roberts University. And it was one of the biggest charisma Pentecostal conferences. I've forgotten the name of this minister. Uh, he actually fell into deception. We are... Carlton Pearson. And they say that they would give uh, different windows. You know the way that Pastor Salo could play clips called, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? Can I receive it? Now I want you to turn to three people and give them a high five and tell your neighbor, receive a reset. Give three people a high five and tell them, neighbor, receive a reset. Now let me warn you, please listen carefully. I am not just giving points. I am literally speaking prophetically over your life. So what you do in wisdom is when somebody stands under a prophetic mantle, train yourself to receive. Don't be the type of person that just keeps quiet and you allow prophecy to go over your head. Learn to pull it down and walk in that reality. So that's one reason you make up your mind. I walked in here for an encounter. I didn't walk in here to finish a service. And I hope I'm talking to somebody here. I walked in here because I know the word that God laid in my pastor, which is a season of refreshing, is my word. So if you're feeling weary, it's an indication you actually need a refreshing. So you are in the right church. So I want you for one minute, lift up your hands. I want you to make a decree. Say in Jesus' name. Make it like an authority. Say every power that may be hindering my release. I remove you now because my season is changing. And I want you to prophesy. I say, over my life, I make a decree. Seasons of refreshing are opening for me. Come on, make it as a declaration. Say, seasons of refreshing are opening over my head. Now, for one minute, I want you to lift your hands and just make a prayer. Just one minute. Open your mouth and make some prayer before we continue. Because I need, I can see some of you need that prayer. Open your mouth. Make prayers of decision. He says, I will wait until my change comes. So make some prayers of some decisions. Please do it with an authority. Leave your neighbor alone. If you came for an encounter, then I need you to open your mouth and make a decision that this season will not pass me. Let both of your hands, if possible, go up. Not one of them. Let both of them go up. And as you lift both of your hands, I want you to lift up a prayer of decree. I can't hear you, word of light. I can't hear you. I stopped for a while because somebody here needs a major release. I want you to declare every spell of the heaviness is lifted from me. And the Lord grants me the garment of praise in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Come on, make a prayer, make a prayer, make a prayer, make a prayer, make a prayer over your life. Even if you're watching us wherever you are, join us in this prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's take another part of prayer. Lift up your hands. I want you to repeat after me. Say, I declare seasons of refreshing are coming over me. Coming over me. Come on, make it a declaration. Say, a seasons of refreshing are coming over me. I command a reset, a new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare today a reset, a new beginning over your life right now. Somebody open your mouth right now. Begin to declare a reset a new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. Declare it by faith. Declare it by faith. Come on, declare it over your life. I want you to change your atmosphere. Please don't sit comfortably. Don't pray casually. Pray with some authority. Don't wait for the feeling or the atmosphere. Create it over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, our Father, in Jesus' name. If you believe and receive it, I want you to lift your hands above your head and give the Lord a clap of praise right here. 
you can do better than that give the lord a convicted clap give the lord a convicted clap give him a convicted one give him a clap that he deserves right here in the name of jesus just keep on playing stay with me softly number three or are you balancing on that side number three why do we need a change of seasons thirdly to confirm the word of god in our lives change changes of seasons come to confirm what god has been speaking over us god follows seasons to finish his word god follows seasons to establish what he's speaking please i need an amen, amen. have you ever noticed that joseph at the age of 30 is when he became established as a prime minister the word of the lord followed him at the age of 30 David at 30 years is when he was anointed to become king over Israel. So most of the times when you study the Bible, you would notice the word, the age of 30. Jesus himself beginning ministry at the age of 30. The age of 30 is a prophetic age in scripture to the Jewish people. It's an age that signifies fullness of stature. That somebody has come into maturity and readiness and preparedness to carry out their mandate. In our time, we know very well it doesn't have to be at the age of 30. But the point I wanted to pick out out of each one of them is that you notice God followed his word and accomplished it at a particular stage. Seasons come to change to fulfill his word in your life. That's one of the key reasons why you should not allow death to visit you. Reject it at all costs. Why? Because if it cuts off your life, it cuts off his word. Can I hear an amen? But when you speak, God will cause his word to come to pass. Go with me to the book of Psalms chapter number 92. And look at David making some declarations here. Psalms chapter number 92. And observe what David says here when he begins to speak some words in a very profound way. And this is where God is about to take somebody in Jesus' precious name. When I say that, you shout a better amen. Look at verses number 12. Psalms 92 from verse 12 to verse number 15. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Are you reading the same Bible I am? Kai, me, I'm already excited. You people are looking at it like it's ordinary. He says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord. Are you planted here? If you're planted, you need to shout a better amen. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of their God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Old age doesn't just talk of your age. Don't say old age is 70. It basically talks about how your growth continues. Verse number 15 is my emphasis. I wish I had the Amplified Bible. It says to show that the Lord is upright and he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. That even as I keep on growing, God follows his word. As I keep on growing, God follows his word. As I keep on growing, he says, they will be fat and they will be flourishing. In old age, God will keep on pursuing you. As you keep on growing, God says, I will follow my word over your life. Seasons change to fulfill his word upon your life. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our pastor who celebrated 45 years of age. Tomorrow we have made a decision we will pour water. Amen. Praise the Lord. Publicly I've announced it. I've announced it again. But as we pour water, we will also pour money so that we will convince him not to attack us. Amen. Because I know he's already angry when we said water. But I can assure you when he will see water and money both in two hands, Pastor Salah will lift up his hands and say, I am ready to receive. Hmm? Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, Pastor, tomorrow we are coming for you. Point your hands to your pastor. Say, Pastor, Point your hands towards him. Say, we are coming for you. When you know what I'm point, point your hands towards him. Say, we are coming for you tomorrow. Say, pastor, come ready. We are coming for you. Yes, yes. So that's what we are actually intending. He's already pointing me <laughs> back to sender. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what are we simply declaring? And I want to say this to each one of you. That every time we keep on growing like your pastor at 45, we also make a declaration. Let me shock you. In the Hebrew culture, whenever a birthday was celebrated, they didn't just celebrate it anyhow. The parents picked up the Bible or the Torah then, and particularly the books of songs, and they would pick up the Psalms and pick it up equal to the age of the individual. In that Psalm, there is a prophecy. In the same Psalm, there is a prayer point. So your pastor turned 45. Let's go there. And I will shock you. And this thing is practically true. So any one of you, anytime you grow old, there's always a word for you. Pick it in the book of Psalms. If you turn 30, go to Psalms 30. Your amen. Are you hearing me? 
So look at Psalms 45, Pastor Samuel. This is where there's prophecy for you. And this is where there's a word for you. My heart is indicted in a good matter. I speak of the things which I made touching the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. That is already a prophecy, Pastor. That at this age, the blessing is already speaking for you. You can keep on reading it, but look at what he says in verse 6. Thy throne, O God, forever is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is at your right, I mean, is a right scepter. Verse number 7 says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, even your God anoints you with the oil of gladness. So over this season, Pastor Salo, you will be glad. And it says, above your fellows. So there will be an anointing of constantly keeping you above. Now that's what the Jewish people do. Celebrating a birthday of a two-year child is not calling every Tom, Dick, and Harry. They may not remember that. But there's something you pick up. You pick up Psalms chapter 2 and you quote it over their lives as you celebrate it. You pick up the prophecy behind it and you pick up a prayer point behind it and their life shifts. Listen, seasons come to fulfill prophetic words over your life. Can you give the Lord a clap offering for that one in the name of Jesus? Your clap needs a bit of salvation. Give the Lord a better clap right here. To establish his word. And God follows prophecy. He doesn't fail to fulfill it. Can I hear an amen? You know, when you read Daniel chapter number 9 and verse number 2, it says, I, Daniel, when I studied the books, I understood the 70 years were to be accomplished concerning Israel. Daniel quickly triggered himself into the eye. Please, could we sit down? My sister, go back and sit down. I've noticed you people have a habit of walking in and out. I have finished it from now. Amen. Permanently. Praise and worship me on me, Melissa. Uh, permanently. No one moves out until I finish praying, preaching and praying for you. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor that is Pastor Pancras. He has finished it. Yeah, te no, tell your neighbor that is Pastor Pancras. He has finished it. I know you can get angry at your pastor, but me, I have finished it, Pastor Salo. I don't know how Amen. Now, listen to me carefully as to what I'm simply saying. Whenever you keep on understanding that prophecy is powerful, then you keep on understanding it pursues you in ages. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Daniel understood it and he pursued it. The challenge with us is that we rarely forget that every time a season begins, it means a prophecy should be accomplished. Every time a season begins, it means a prophecy should be established. Every time a season begins, it means God wants to accomplish a word that he has actually been speaking to a generation. And that's one prayer we need to be praying. Look at 1 Peter 5 and verses number 10. 1 Peter 5 and verses number 10. And observe what it says here in 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. He says, but the God of all grace, somebody say all grace. Shout it with authority, say again, all grace. He says, a God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while. Now, let's put that word in context. Suffering is not lack of money. Basically, he's saying after you have been processed for a while, if we interpret it correctly. Is that so? After you have been processed for a while, look at what he says. Let him therefore make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Have you been processed? Then God will pursue his word. I said God will pursue his word. I repeat it again. God will pursue his word. Number four, why do seasons change? Fourth reason is to establish new patterns, to help you establish new patterns in your life. God will always bring a change of seasons with the intention of bringing in new patterns, new habits, new cultures in the midst of a people. So we will go to Acts chapter number three, first of all, and then we will dig deeper. Many people always miss out on the opportunity of new seasons. As season changes, they maintain the old habits and expect new season. I mean, a, a, a wave to happen. It doesn't work like that. Acts chapter three and verse 19. If you're there, you can shout amen. He says, repent. Okay, look at that. Repent it therefore and be converted. What is the word repent? It means change your mind. Change your patterns. Repent. That's what he's saying. Confession is different from repentance. Confession is acknowledging your position, but repentance is changing it. 
He says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted away. Then he says, then the times of refreshing will come from the presence of God. So I want you to understand that when seasons change, God himself allows it to change so that he gives you room to change your patterns. The Bible says, new wine can never be poured into old wine skin. Word of light, Nairobi, listen to me. There are things you people have to intentionally make as a decision. We will stop them. And there are things you have to make as a choice. We are changing because of where God is taking us to. God never gave out girlfriends. Thank God you guys are increasing to have married couples here. The Bible says he that findeth a wife, not a girlfriend. So anything that God gives, he considers a finished product. That's one thing that God always looks at. So that tells you that if somebody will actually attract a husband, there must be habits in the individual that look like a wife. Some of us, even in this church, and I will still talk about this tomorrow, there are patterns as a church. You guys have to make a decision you will change. How you will do service, how you will handle things. If you constantly maintain familiarity, you choke the move of God in this church. I'm telling you that. Seasons change to give you the wisdom to change patterns. Otherwise, God will say the season of refreshing is here. But when he comes to pour it, the old wineskin messes it up. But I see us not going in that direction. I told people somewhere, and I know all of us are aware of the definition of insanity. It is doing the same things over and over, expecting different results. A madman is not the one that has painted himself with oil on the face and carried enough rags around him and what we call sacks walking around. No, there are many people who are mad in church. They can come to church and they are still on their phones. That is madness. A story of a pastor. He said while he was actually starting in ministry and he wasn't yet a pastor, but he was hungry for impartation. The guy said he noticed every time he was in church as his main pastor, senior pastor would be preaching, he would be completely carried away into other thoughts, biting his nails, confusing other focuses. So he noticed he was distracted and realized there was never any impartation. So one day he made up his mind and he decided he would sit and look at the pastor as the sermon would be going on. He said as he sat down, he looked at the pastor like a goalkeeper. He said he focused on him. As the pastor kept on preaching, the guy said he never knew when the service ended. All he remembered is when he was waking up to be cleaned up because he was down under the power of God. And that is when he asked, when did the service end? They told him two hours ago. The guy had an encounter. Today he's a chairman of the pastor's fellowship in Gashir. He's a short guy, but a very powerful voice of God. You know, there are things God is just wanting to do in your life, but God will not do it until you make a decision to intention change some things. There are things you have to change. Change your prayer life for a while. If it was one hour and it didn't work, shift it to two hours. If not, at least one and a half hours. Begin to do things differently. If you notice that your joy is being affected, begin to alter some things. Because that season is already released. But you have to adjust and position so that you can download it into your life. Seasons change to announce to you that there is also a need of change of patterns. May you change certain things. I said again, may you change certain things. Change the way you handle certain things. Change the way you handle the things that God has given to you. Please give me a better amen. Listen, word of light, if we will go to the next level, we have to change things. We have to. We have to. A man of God was giving his story. He's a man that goes to Winner's Chapel. That guy said how he struggled financially and had debts to an extent where people followed him to church and demanded it from his pastor. He was such an embarrassment and he knew very well he will never break out of poverty. And so one day he told God, I vow at every level of blessing you will give me, I will increase the percentage. As we are talking, that guy gives God 90% of all his earnings and lives on only 10% of what he has. And he claims to be a multi-millionaire. That man will stand to speak to people and people will be shifted. He has a principle and a covenant. One of them is wherever he goes, he has to go with his wife. The second covenant he has is that every place he will ever go to minister, they constantly minister to widows. Any widow, whether you're rich or poor, they will give you money, they will give you stuff. In any place or any nation they ever go to, that is another covenant they have. Another covenant they have is that they always tell the pastor, we don't want your honorarium unless you really have to give us. They come prepared themselves to bless that ministry. That man again 
Bible says he lives on 10% and gives God 90. But he speaks about how he began. In fact, in part of his story, he said when God opened a door for him to go to a certain state, when he landed there, he left the wife, struggled to arrive there, only to find himself starting to have a job where he's selling clothes. And he began, he was struggling, but he was faithful. And one day, the wife of the governor ended up coming. It wasn't the wife of the governor. One person close to the wife of the governor ended up looking at him and he told him, you look like somebody who can do contracts and have tenders to print books and stuff like that. He says, I don't know how you know, but that's what I've been doing. And the lady said, you know, I don't know you, but I feel you're the person for this job. The lady went ahead and took this guy, introduced him to the wife of the governor of that state. It is your state, your state. And after introducing him, that wife of of, uh, the governor said we've always given out the tender people don't deliver so we want to ask you how much will it cost now everyone that ever did a presentation Pastor Brian always said 700,000 naira he quoted 250 the wife of the governor didn't believe he said no mom this one is enough the wife of the governor decided to send the person they paid him the 250 then sent that person to say pay him the other extra 250 as an appreciation of his honesty now within the first 250 he already has his, he had his 100. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Then you have been added an extra 250. So by the time he started it, when he delivered the first bunch, the wife of the governor said, for being faithful, I want to add another 500. I hope you guys are hearing me. He said when he got his first payment, when he sent the wife the first 200,000, you know, the first one was 250. Uh, that time after he sent the wife, didn't have a phone, struggled to get, called the wife. The wife started lecturing him and telling him, you, you don't even care for us. You have let us for over one month. We have struggled. He told the wife, please, I want to go to the bank, there's this, that, and the other. The wife went and found 200,000. That is money for several years they had never known. The wife was a typical African that withdrew all things and fulfilled scripture. Manna should not be left for another day. Took out the entire 200,000. Never left a dime in the account because she never knew whether it was somebody else's money. Kept on asking the husband, are you sure? Did you steal? What did you do to get all this money? The husband told the wife, you relax. After a while, I will call you. God walked in and God reminded him. Remember you said you will give me 90. He had no option. He had to collect the 90 and give it to God. As he released it like this. He got a phone call of another deal that the wife of the governor introduced him to that was actually paying him 2.5 million. Your amen. Oh, I forgot I carried mine. Amen. <laughs> Are you hearing me? 2.5. He said from there his life started moving. Moving. He brought his family. His wife became so excited and got healed that that entire problem was wiped away. But notice his problems were altered after he also changed several things. You know, I want to leave this as a thought. That remember what the scripture says. The times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. But the platform to draw those is repentance. Change of habits. Change of patterns. If we will move as a ministry to the next level, there are things we will have to change. Whatever God will demand of you change. Please listen to me. Change it. Is it how you speak? Is it how you come to church? Is it how you give? Whatever it is that he will tell you to do, please, ladies and gentlemen, do it. Is it that God will demand of you, let go of this and forgive this or do that? God will demand of you, please do it. I want you to tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, be committed to changing your patterns. Look at the other one again and tell your neighbor, neighbor, seasons of refreshing are coming, but there is a calling. Come on, look at them. Tell them for me. There is a calling that you have to change your patterns. I want you to look at another one again. I want you to turn to somebody else and tell them again with authority. Tell them again, neighbor, seasons of refreshing are coming, but God is calling you to change your patterns. Tell them, neighbor, change it, change it, change it. Tell them with conviction. Tell them again, neighbor, change your patterns. As I stand here as a prophet, I see you guys as a ministry moving to the next level. I can stand this and I can say it with all audacity. But I also can stand here to tell you, the Lord is saying change is necessary. Change is necessary. Some of you don't talk to certain people and God has hidden one part of your answer in somebody else. Holding a grudge and not talking to that person may be holding the door that you take it to the next level. Some of you in this congregation, probably the way you handle your imam, you don't know in an early fight breakthrough. 
A couple that was believing God for a breakthrough for children. So you should thank God for word of life. That's not an area we really struggle in. This couple struggled to get children. But that day when they walked into church, the pastor said, the Lord is saying miracles will follow people when they will come out of here. My God, the couple shouted amen because we are part of the people believing God. The pastor even made it worse and said children will be delivered here. And the couple left, but the pastor gave one instruction at the end of the sermon. And this is what the, the pastor said. He said, as you will go out, avoid any conversation that will nullify what God is about to do. Make sure you the sermon begins and people wondered why is the pastor saying so he said because probably your wife made you come late to church i know the women in this church come early amen praise the lord hallelujah praise the name of the lord so but what i'm simply trying to say is that this couple as they walked into the car they just began to have an argument out of nowhere remember they have been given a word they just began just you know just out of nowhere then something hit the wife and she turned to the husband and said remember the word of the pastor he said we should avoid arguing begin to give thanks and have an atmosphere for worship so immediately they took one of the music they liked both of them began to play it and began to give thanks that same night is when they engaged together and that is when barrenness was broken and God opened them up into fruitfulness that's why I'm saying word of light I hope you can hear the sound of this prophet God is saying there are changes that are needed here maybe how you come maybe how you pray because you can retain weariness if you're not careful but you can change and enjoy days of moving from strength to strength grace to grace please i want you to turn to three neighbors again and even if you're watching me if you have a neighbor turn to them look at three of them tell the first one neighbor change your patterns because a season has changed look at the second one for me look at somebody else again tell the neighbor change your patterns because the seasons have changed now look Look at the third one for me and tell them neighbor refreshing is coming your way make sure they are prophesying to you like you're prophesying to them tell them neighbor refreshing is coming to you renewal is coming to you doors are opening for you favor is coming to you but tell your neighbor neighbor change your patterns please if you believe it i want you to give the lord a clap of praise right here there may be changes there may be small things you need to do small things you need to do a couple was struggling in their sexual life and they wondered why they were struggling until they sat down to hear a pastor speak that even your bedroom can affect the atmosphere of your bedroom can affect your sexual life they did not understand and that's when they walked in they discovered that their bedroom sometimes is left anyhow they decided to just reorganize it a little and it was fresh and it flowed Kai. That's a powerful revelation to the married. Amen. Praise the Lord. God just changed something. It might just be to move your bed a little. Oh, I thought I had an amen. Oh, I forgot. I carried my own. Amen. <laughs> change. So, Father, we thank you because we are walking into a new season. We thank you because we know there's a change we have to apply. Please stand up on your feet. I want us to make a prayer right now. And we will make a prayer with diligence. Can we do that right now? Are you guys ready for a new season? So I want us to pray like we have never prayed. Boy, is that possible? So lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. And you will pray with all your heart. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. I thank you for the change of seasons. I thank you for the change of seasons. My days will never be the same. I am moving from glory to glory. Please, you need to shout it like me. I am moving from glory to glory. From grace to grace. From strength to strength. From miracle to miracle. From release to release. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up both of your hands. I want you to repeat it with authority. Say, in the name of Jesus. Even as a ministry, our change has come. Our change has come. Our change has come. Our change has come. And we declare that we receive it now. We declare we receive it now. 
Therefore we speak today that whatever we need to do to align to the season, we are doing it now. We repent of the old culture. We let it go. We receive a new pattern in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to open your mouth and I want you to lift up a prayer. And I want you to ask the Lord to help you to have a change in this season. Please pray with some zest and authority. Pray with some zest and authority. Pray with some zest and authority. Pray like you are desperate for a change. Tafadhali imam wa kuomba ni kama mdomo haizi funguka chana nae. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. you I can't hear you open your mouth and raise a prayer open your mouth and raise a prayer in the name of Jesus lift your hands repeat after me please lift up your hands say Heavenly Father I receive freshness renew me oh God that I can move into what you call me to Renew me, O oh God. Please pray it with authority. Renew me, O oh God, that I can move into what you call me to. Say in the name of Jesus, I will not miss my season. You know you are more than I am, but you're talking like it's as though you're a Catholic. Pray with authority. Say in the name of Jesus, I move into what you call me to. I receive strength. I receive renewal. I receive new energy. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus, now turn it into a prayer. Open your mouth and turn it into a prayer right now because the seasons are changing. Turn it into a prayer. Turn it into a prayer. Pray from the boils of your spirit. 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 In the name of Jesus. Now please grab a partner, be two by two. I feel I need to help you to pray. Two by two, hold both hands of your neighbor. Both hands as you face them, please. Both hands as you face them. Make sure you have a partner. And if you don't find one, you can be three. There's no problem. I want you to pray for your partner. Oh God, refresh. And give them the capacity to adjust. Give them the capacity to begin to align. Just open your mouth and pray for them right now. Open your mouth and pray for them right now. Open your mouth and pray for them right now. Open your mouth and pray. Pray God. Give them renewed hope in the name of Jesus. Give them renewed expectation. Give them, oh God, a renewed fire. Come on, you can do better. You can do better in prayer. You can do better. You can do better. You can do better. Make it authoritative. Make it live. Make it with authority. Yes. Shalima namoko shelebekanda. Elinga na mosende le keria mabrone, lambrende le keria mabrote le kanama. Come on, I want you to help your neighbor in prayer. Help your neighbor in prayer. Likando le keria mabrone le kete le baka, libroto kote lika na moshke le be, lembre deske le me keria mabrote, linga na moshke le beka. In Jesus' name, walk over to somebody else, please. Walk over to somebody else very quickly. Walk over to them. I want you to open your mouth. Declare, I break days of affliction, days of oppression. I break every delay. I break every weariness. Just open your mouth and speak, pray for them. I declare you are breaking weariness. You are breaking every fatigue. You break every discouragement. Break it in the name of Jesus. Break it in the name of Jesus. Break it in the name of Jesus. And I want you to prophesy newness, newness, 
newness, freshness. Shinde ke katolika namo, linde le boria ma pro, le ke talima no me tolikaria, limbre do te te beta kia, le pro tolika namo telebe, lindo le karia ma pro telebe, le ke nami shonina ma karia, linde le beta lika nami sha, le ke ni mi toni mandori ba, ro beta lika namoske, linde le be karia. Come on, somebody open your mouth. Pray with them in the name of Jesus. Shalinga la boria ma proteleba. Dile mendali kana moshke de me. Romente de me koria. Leke de me shonde de me. La prende de me koria ma protele me. La tende de me kandile de koshe. La de me karia ma protele me. Rote te 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 te. Romembe me katali kana moshe. Roman balakandi le me koria. Leke ria ma protele me. Rome tali kana moshke de me. Rande de me karia ma protele me. Rakama shanda. Leke ria ma protele me. In the name of Jesus, walk over to the third person very quickly. Third and last one, hold their hand. I want you to prophesy over them. Lord, change their days. Lord, change their seasons. Lord, give them a new beginning. Reset their time. Reset it in the name of Jesus. Reset their time. Reset it in the name of Jesus. I want you to prophesy even in this church. Prophesy a reset. Prophesy a new beginning. Prophesy a new beginning. Prophesy. A Prophesy a new beginning. Prophesy a new beginning. Prophesy. Oh, mandele kori mandolika, shandele bekaria ma bronde. Dile me koshke ne me karia, lembre dosi ne me kori ma, le kanda ma kande le me karia, le mana mo kote le me koria, le tende le me karia ma bro, linde le me la mi andoliga, romende le me karia, le kande le me karia ma mronde le me, loke te le me katila ma shanda, rome te li kanima, linge le me koria. Now lift your hands. I want you to declare, I am laying aside every weight. I am laying aside every weight. And the sin that so easily besets me, I am laying it aside. Every anger, every unforgiveness, every bitterness, every lack of drive, everything that can discourage, I am laying it aside. Everything that can slow me down, laziness, I lay it aside. Carnality, I lay it aside. Come on, somebody, open your mouth, and I want you to announce a new beginning. Come on. Come on and do better, do better, do better. Yes. 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 No, no, you can do better. Lift a prayer of desperation. Lift up a prayer of desperation. Lord, may you give me newness. Lord, may you renew my spirit. Come on, somebody open your mouth and raise a prayer. for the new season give him thanks for the new season give him thanks for the new season give him thanks for the new season we bless you we give you glory can we now lift our hands let's give the Lord a clap do it with a lot of conviction don't just clap anyhow do it with a lot of praise and conviction Word of light, release your praise, release your praise, release your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now we want to anoint you so that you can go back and release a prayer. Is that so? Can you feel something being opened here? If you can feel it, let me see your hands. Are you feeling a release here? Now, let me say this. Uh, when I walked in here, I know that God is busy working in somebody. Maybe work or burdens you have carried, but they are being lifted today. From today after, we will pray for you. You will notice that you have wings to rise, grace to do better. There's something that will enter you that will enable you to do more than you've ever done. Some of you, the areas of struggle will be lifted today. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Please, I need an amen. Are you hearing me? It will be lifted. 
it will be, I wish I had five days with you people. It will be lifted. And we want to be able to see to it that as we anoint you, we'll just put oil on you and send you back. But you will just begin to sense you are lighter. There will be an ease and open heavens. God is aware of the burdens you have carried. God is aware of the weariness you have. But also some things you must make a decision. I am leaving them. They are the cause of your draining. But God is bringing renewal in the precious name of Jesus. I will ask the pastors just to come. And then we are going to start praying for you in the precious name of Jesus. Are we ready? So just to make it easier, we will start with this side very quickly. We will start with this side quickly, quickly. You will just be coming. Pour it here, Pastor. Quickly. See, it, it will be too much pour in the contract. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, take it. Come here. Here. In the name of Jesus, Father, I release him to his next level. Whatever is over his atmosphere, it shifts today. I command his heavens to open from henceforth in the name of Jesus. Come, 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 come. Iposh kandila karimo sokoria. Don't you don't have to kneel down. Limbro doskonda la bakaria ma prosoka. Let there be renewed visions. Let them come again. Let the visions that were that dissipated. The Lord is restoring back your prophetic sight, your ability to see, your ability to see. I see prophetic sight being restored. Prophetic sight being restored. Prophetic sight. You will see them before they happen. You will sense them before they take place, and you will know how to apply. Shinko kati kori katia pray. Dose alinga tolika talika ipro anything that perturbed your mind is lifted. Lift your hands. Anything that harassed you, God says, compare not yourself with others, neither ever doubt his seasons over your life. You've had a bit of stress in your head and felt like some things are not working. But the Lord is saying he hasn't left you. So leave him with the stress. I break every stress in your mind. I command your mind to be comforted. I declare your mind finds comfort, peace in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ and I open your heavens from today help me with this microphone I open your heavens from today I declare from today things you pursued you will see them coming with ease you are now beginning days of grace grace for your race grace for your race it will no longer be difficult in the name of Jesus Aboshe Kandila Romenda Lakaria Mokose Alikaria Mopro your hands are given strength strength to do more strength to labor more you may have felt a bit heavy in lifting it up but the Lord is renewing your strength for God will entrust you with more than you ever thought and he will use this as a platform of elevating you in the mighty name of Jesus I command your belly to be full of life receive capacity in the place of prayer receive capacity in the place of prayer capacity in waiting on God capacity for breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Lift your hands. Imbolo kolika na mose. Alonde le kanda la karia mopro. Robeta lika na mose. Alonde le kario. Robeta lika. Days of piercing through. Days of walking into breakthroughs are here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I see your head piercing through layers after layers after layers after layers. Your head is just piercing through. For the Lord is saying his oil will abide on you. But he's calling you to deeper levels of work together with him. That oil will never fail on your head. For the calling of piercing layers. May this oil never run dry in your head. Never run dry in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Kolika disala tolika. Your discernment grows. Your discernment grows. Your sharpness grows. Your